This is a 12 bore case and this is a four bore case. It takes some shotgun to be able to shoot these rounds. And right here, I have one with two barrels. We are the outlaws. This is a double barreled four bore shotgun. It's mental. Brand new, this gun was over £100,000 and now it sits in Holtz Auctioneers at twenty to 30000 in almost unfired condition. This gun was made in 2014 and it's 42 inch barrels. 42 inch barrels. Take a four inch four bore case. The gun itself weighs 17 pounds, nine ounces. Interestingly, and here is actually quite an interesting thing. It handles quite well for a 17 pound gun. To really understand the point, we have to look at the history of the four bore. Early in the European conquest of India and Africa, they realized that their standard muskets and rifles were inadequate against the thick skinned and dangerous game. And so in an effort to make bigger, harder hitting guns, they looked at what they already had and they looked at fouling pieces. These guns already existed for shooting ducks and geese for market and personal consumption in 4, 8, 10, 6, 12, all manner of large calibers. They looked at these and adapted them for their own use, beefing them up and making them more ready for larger charges. By the early 1800s, they had perfected these guns thick, heavy barrels, big, strong guns, capable of shooting 2,000 grain projectiles out of a four bore. That's a big bullet. A four bore, quite simply, is one pound of lead cut into four pieces, four quarter pound pieces. That quarter pound piece will fit perfectly down the bore of a four bore. That works out to be 25.6 mil or just over an inch. That's a big, tube. Obviously, the more balls you have, the lower the caliber. 12 bore, 12 individual spheres of lead. The problem with black powder and a quarter pound ball is that you can shove it pretty hard, but to keep pressures reasonable and recoil manageable, it's still a slow projectile. This meant that with certain large animals like elephants, you might need multiple shots because they didn't have the penetration that we expect from modern ammunition. One of the hunting styles at the time, in fact, was to ride in on horseback with a short carbine version of a four bore, shoot and ride away as fast as you could, going back in for a second shot or third shot or fourth shot if necessary. The majority of those early guns were smooth bore. They had no rifling at all. It was just a smooth tube. Getting into the 1850s and rifled four bores became more of a thing. They didn't really catch on as much as you would have thought. The rifling obviously gave greater accuracy, but given that most encounters with large and dangerous game were at 40 to 50 yards, you didn't need any more accuracy than a smooth ball could give you. The resistance met when trying to push a bullet up through rifling meant that you got a slower projectile and more recoil. Two things that hunters generally don't like. On top of that, with a muzzle loading rifle, it's actually slower to reload it. And so until breech loaders came about in 1870s, they were not that popular. Late 1860s and early 1870s were the golden age, the heyday of the four bore, with people like Sanderson and Sellers using them to take elephants. Remembering during that time that elephant hunting and ivory hunting was being properly romanticized. Getting into the 1870s and breech loading came to the fore. Suddenly the four and a half inch four bore black powder cartridge was available. These guns launched the same projectile with the same propellant as the muzzle loader, but you could reload it much faster, giving a faster rate of fire. However, the projectile was still just as slow, just as big, and lacked in penetration the same. And so in 1884, when nitro powder came onto the scene, we saw the development of nitro loads, nitro express calibers. These fired large slugs, not as big as the four ball granted, but very, very fast, giving good knockdown power and excellent penetration. On top of that, the recoil was more manageable and it was smokeless powder, meaning you didn't have this huge cloud of smoke getting in between you and the dangerous game you were pursuing. And so within a few years, the four ball almost died. It exists now as a curiosity with black powder and nitro versions being made in smooth ball and rifled versions by gun makers as, as I said, a curiosity, a showpiece, they are magnificent guns when produced well, and the size and the scale of them is utterly awesome. 
until just over a decade ago when Watson decided to join their ranks by making a full ball. What happened was, I saw these going through auction, and I really loved the big ball guns. I saw the prices they were fetching at auction. All right, for a basic hammer double four ball, um, 30k plus. Okay. So I thought, well, they're non ejectors. I thought we could build an ejector, uh, side lock, single or That's double really trigger, um, 42 inch barreled four ball. Which obviously, I looked a lot at the early four balls right, okay. and went from there. They're for high geese, is what we're building them for. High geese, goodness me. Well, I have to say, that is unbelievable. You can still pick up those flintlock singles, those percussion doubles, those early breech loaders, but they are rare. You need to keep your eyes on auction sites and you can still buy them new if you feel the need. So back to this double four ball. This gun is a absolute monster, made in 2014 by Watson Brothers in London. It's a true scale four ball, so it actually doesn't look too bad in the grand scheme of things in line. It has a 15 and a three quarter inch stock that is, um, boat paddle worthy. It's an absolute monster, as is the grip. But I guess it would look stupid if you put a 12 bore style grip on it. It's got to be big. The only reassuring thing is the size of the grip and the weight of the gun is that when you shoot this, I doubt it would kick that much. And never have I wanted to shoot a gun more. Although I don't think it would be as painful as some of the other things we shot. The action is completely covered in this oak leaf style engraving with a pair of geese on the bottom. It's a lot of steel. It's definitely a lot of steel. You've got side clips here, it's engraved on the breech ends, and this giant top lever opens it up to reveal this treble grip action. One, two, and three. To be honest, I perhaps expected a little bit more in terms of lockup, but hey, it passed proof, so I'm sure it's absolutely fine. You clip it and you take the forend off, the forend weighing as much as most 410 shotguns. It is an absolute beast. Very, very pretty metal work, huge release button. This is a big, big old gun. Take that off. It's proofed in metric, which is interesting, at 23.7 millimeter bore. Given that a 12 bore is 18.3, that's an extra five mil in width. That's um, it's a lot of boom. And 101 millimeter long chambers, which is four inch. Back in the day, as we've discussed, the four and a quarter inch black powder was king, but this is actually nitro proofed four bore. London proofed in 2014. It's not steel proofed. That's um, really not the end of the world, given I doubt you'd find four bore steel cartridges. And if you are loading this yourself, chuck some bismuth in there. Um, I don't think this is the sort of thing that you want to do volume shooting with anyway, but it is an ejector, so you can at least ram the next two in there quite well. I mean, just look at the size of the drop points on this. It is a colossal thing. What I quite like, by the way, I completely missed out, the beaded trigger tang runs all the way down into the metal grip cap that is engraved on sweet with the rest with its acorns and oak leaves. Watson definitely engraved some wild looking guns and build some pretty mental things. This is up there with one of the most mental doubles I have ever seen. Why own it? Fun. Nowadays, presume that is the case really, isn't it? Fun. Why wouldn't you want a four bore shotgun? If you can afford one, could it be the ultimate toy? Who knows? Guys, thank you very much for watching and deep diving on the four bore with me. Should this gun even exist? I mean, this gun is just an absolute monster, isn't it? And I suppose there's nothing wrong with owning the biggest thing. I mean, it does, look at this, this comes up to my chest, I'm six foot seven. This gun is over five foot tall. That's colossal. It's gotta be five, three, five, four. In fact, I'll tell you what, let's look in the catalog in which there is no overall length. Either way, guys, I think it's pretty epic. It's pretty stupid. It's definitely dumb, but it's cool. Thank you for watching, guys. This channel is made possible by our amazing sponsors. You can find out more about them in the description down below. And if you want to support the channel, you can join as a member. You get loads of extra content, well, some extra content, and occasionally we hook up and go clay shooting together as a membership group. If you don't feel like joining today, we really appreciate you watching and subscribing. Have a wonderful day.
This elephant gun is insane.